Hello friends, in the part first of the ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy, we are going to study the range of ultraviolet and visible radiation, the sources of radiation, principle of the ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy and Beer Lambert's law. So let's begin with the range of ultraviolet and visible radiation. In electromagnetic spectrum, ultraviolet region extend from 100 nanometer up to 400 nanometer. This is the region where we found ultraviolet radiation. In some books, this range is given that is a uh, 10 nanometer up to 400 nanometer. In this study, we will take the range 100 nanometer up to 400 nanometer. Now this ultraviolet region is divided into two parts. The first part, it is the ultraviolet radiation having wavelength below 200. This is the region. And this part, it is called as a, a far ultraviolet region. Far ultraviolet region. And it is also called as a vacuum ultraviolet region. This region is not useful for the ultraviolet spectroscopy because all the study we have to carry it out in a vacuum. Now, the region above 200 nanometer up to 400 nanometer, which is divided into the near and middle ultraviolet region, it is also called as a, a quartz region. This is also called as a quartz region and it is useful in a ultraviolet spectroscopy. So this region is used, that is about 200 nanometer, it is used in a ultraviolet spectroscopy. Now, the visible radiation, it is having a wavelength 400 nanometer up to 800 nanometer. So here we can found a different color that is vapor violet up to the red having a different wavelength and different energy. Now if you compare the wavelength as well as energy, you can see here when we take a 10 nanometer as a wavelength, then the energy, if you calculate, then we found that the energy is 1 into 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per mole. And when we take a 100 nanometer, then the energy is 1 into 10 raised to 3 kilojoule per mole. For 400 nanometer, the energy become a 2.49 into 10 raised to 2 kilojoule per mole. And for 800 nanometer, the energy of the electromagnetic radiation is 1.49 into 10 raised to 2 kilojoule per mole. So in this way, when we compare the energy as well as the wavelength of the ultraviolet and visible radiation, we found that the range of the ultraviolet radiation is, we are taking here 100 nanometer up to 400 nanometer and the energy of this ultraviolet radiation is, we are taking 1 into 10 raised to 3 kilojoule per mole up to uh, 2.99. Uh, sorry, I have written here 49, but actually it is 2.99 into 10 raised to 2. It is the kilojoule per mole. And for visible region, the energy becomes 2.99 into 10 raised to 2 kilojoule per mole up to 1.49 into 10 raised to 2 kilojoule per mole. So visible region is having a less energy than ultraviolet region and ultraviolet region is having less wavelength than visible region. Different sources are used for the generation of the ultraviolet as well as visible radiation. For ultraviolet radiation, deuterium discharge lamp, hydrogen lamp, xenon discharge lamp, mercury arc lamp, these are used. Whereas for visible radiation, tungsten filament lamp, mercury vapor lamp, 
carbon on lamp are used for the generation deuterium discharge lamp and a tungsten filament lamp they are generally used in the ultraviolet uh, as well as visible spectroscopy this is a deuterium discharge lamp and it is having a wavelength about 190 nanometer to 370 nanometer it means that it generates ultraviolet radiation having wavelength 190 nanometer up to 370 nanometer and this is the tungsten filament lamp and it produces a visible radiation which is having a wavelength about 350 nanometer up to 2000 nanometer these two lamps they are generally used in the ultraviolet as well as visible spectroscopy now we will see the principle of ultraviolet visible spectroscopy principle of the ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy depends upon the interaction of ultraviolet or visible radiation with the chemical compound the absorption of the ultraviolet or visible radiation by a chemical compound causes excitation of the electron from ground state to the excited state here ground state it means that the electrons at the low energy level and excited state it means that the electron at a higher energy level and it results in the production of distinct spectra here the spectra is obtained which is nothing but the plot of absorbance versus the wavelength now when ultraviolet or visible radiation is passed over a chemical compound the electron ex electrons are excited from ground state to excited state to understand this excitation we have to know the energy levels of bonding orbitals non bonding orbitals and anti bonding orbitals and i have drawn here the energy levels this is the sigma bonding orbital pi bonding orbital n non bonding orbital pi star anti bonding and sigma star anti bonding orbital and the energies of this anti bonding orbital that is pi star and sigma star are high whereas a uh, energy of sigma and pi that is bonding orbital they are low now when excitation occurs the sigma electron from this bonding orbital get excited to sigma star here the energy difference between sigma to sigma star it is more which is written here sigma to sigma star transition when it is occur or electron when move from sigma to sigma star more energy is required whereas when electron excited from a non bonding orbital to pi star then it requires less energy here the energy which is required it is more and when we calculate the wavelength for this energy we found that around 125 nanometer wavelength is required whereas for this transition from ground state to excited state we require less energy and here the wavelength is about 700 nanometer 200 to 700 nanometer these values is 125 nanometer and 700 nanometer they lies in the range of ultraviolet and visible radiation that's why ultraviolet and visible radiation causes the excitation of electron in a molecule from ground state to excited state in ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy the absorption occurs and which results in the excitation of the electron from ground state to excited state now let us see the uv spectrum we know that uv spectrum is a plot of absorbance versus wavelength here there is a example of acetone here acetone it possesses a sigma electron as well as pi electron and non bonding electron which are present on the oxygen or we may call it as a lone pair so it is a non bonding electron so in this uh, acetone we found sigma to sigma star transition n to sigma star transition pi to pi star as well as n to pi star out of which the n to pi star transition it is having 
a less energy therefore the wavelength for this n2 pi star transition is more here the wavelength is a 274 it is nothing but the n2 pi star transition and for pi 2 pi star transition the wavelength is 195 nanometer in this way we get a two peak in the acetone which belongs to pi to pi star transition and n2 pi star transition so ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy causes a electronic excitation and electronic transition that's why this spectroscopy is also called as a electronic spectroscopy it is also called as a electronic spectroscopy now as there is a absorption of the energy absorption of the wavelength by the solution of the compound we have to study a different absorption laws that is beer law lambert's law and pure lambert's law which governs the ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy to understand the beer lambert's law consider the diagram drawn here when monochromatic light is passed over a solution of absorbing substance in a non-absorbing medium the radiation may be completely absorbed or partially absorbed and some amount of radiation is transmitted let i0 be the intensity of the incident light that is monochromatic light some amount of radiation is absorbed and i is nothing but the intensity of transmitted light after absorption of the radiation c is the concentration of the solution and l is the path length path length means this incident radiation that is i0 is going to pass through this solution from this point to this point this is the path length and it is having value l so in this way when light is incident or is passed over a solution then some amount of light is absorbed some amount of light is transmitted here you can find or here you can see the intensity of incident light and transmitted light here the intensity goes on decreasing therefore after absorption of the light by a substance there is a decrease in the intensity of the light and this decrease in the intensity of this light is given by uh, two laws that is first one is a beer law and second one is the lambert's law and they combines together and they form a beer lambert's law. according to the beer's law the intensity of the incident light decreases exponentially with the concentration of the solution therefore mathematically it can be right like this i is equal to i0 into e raised to minus k1 c where c is the concentration of the solution of substance and i0 is the intensity of the incident light whereas i is the intensity of transmitted light and according to the lambert's law the intensity of the light decreases with the increasing path length of the solution so i can write here i is equal to i0 e raised to minus k2 l l is the path length and here k2 is the constant now combining these two laws that is beers and lambert's we get beer lambert's law and for that purpose here k1 and k2 we can write like this i is equal to i0 that is e raised to minus k1 into k2 into concentration and path length here i will take a k1 k2 is equal to k so this equation it becomes i is equal to i0 e raised to minus k c l so from this equation it is clear that the intensity of the light decreases with increasing concentration as well as path length of the solution and it is 
exponentially decreases. So in this way, we can write the equation for Beer Lambert's law. And how this equation comes out, we can derive this equation. So let's start with the derivation of the Beer Lambert's law. So according to the Beer Lambert's law, the intensity of the incident light decreases with the path length as well as the concentration of the solution. So mathematically, one can write this uh, equation like this uh, minus uh, di by uh, dl is directly proportional to the concentration as well as uh, intensity of the light that is incident light i0. Here di by dl, it indicates decrease in the intensity of the light with respect to the path length. Here C is the concentration, I0 is the intensity of the incident light. Negative sign indicate decrease. Now, uh, minus Di by Dl is equal to K into C I0. K is the constant. I can change the sign that is Di by Dl is equal to minus K C I0. Now, integrating this equation, by taking the limits i0 to i on this side and uh, for dl 0 to l. So first of all, I will write uh, uh, di by i is equal to k that is minus k into c and a uh, dl. Now integrating this equation from i0 to i and here a uh, dl that is 0 to l we get here we get a uh, ln that is i minus ln i0 that is log to the base e i minus log to the base e i0 is equal to minus kc and for this term it is l minus 0 it becomes l so we get this equation now here I can write ln i divided by i0 is equal to minus kcl. Now this equation I will write once again here but reversing this term we get ln i0 divided by i and here when we reverse this term the negative sign eliminates so here I will write only kcl. This is the famous equation for Beer Lambert's law and this equation we can change into the log to the best 10. So here I will write 2.303 into log to the best 10 i0 upon i is equal to kcl. Then here taking 2.303 on this side log to the best 10 i0 upon i is equal to k divided by 2.303 into concentration into path length. Now this term that is k into uh, k divided by 2.303 this term it is equal to the epsilon that is a molar extension coefficient therefore log to the best 10 i divided i0 divided by i is equal to here I put epsilon c into l. Now for this term, I will put here A. A is nothing but the absorbance. So the overall equation, it becomes absorbance. A is equal to epsilon Cl. Epsilon, it means that molar extension coefficient. It is a molar extension coefficient, whereas A, it indicates a absorbance. Now, Coming toward this equation, from this equation, one can write here uh, i is equal to i0 e raised to minus kcl by taking anti log on both sides. So, this equation that we have seen earlier. Now, the equation for uh, Beer Lambert's law is a is equal to epsilon cl, a is nothing but the absorbance and E is nothing but the sorry epsilon is nothing but the molar extension coefficient c is the concentration and l is nothing but the path length 
now when concentration is expressed in a moles per dm cube and path length in a centimeter then when c is equal to 1 that is 1 mole per dm cube and l is equal to 1 centimeter then a is equal to epsilon that is absorbance is equal to the extension coefficient so extension coefficient is defined as the molar absorbance of a solution having unit concentration and path length that is unit path length so when c is equal to 1 and l is equal to 1 absorbance is equal to the molar extension coefficient along with the absorbance and molar extension coefficient another term is used in ultraviolet spectroscopy that is called as a transmittance and here we will see the transmittance transmittance is given by capital t is equal to intensity of the transmitted light divided by intensity of the instant light so by taking a log on a both side log t is equal to log i divided by i0 now taking a negative sign on this side so that it becomes i0 upon i so minus log t is equal to log i0 upon i now sorry here i have to write here i now uh, here log i0 upon i is equal to epsilon cl which is equal to a therefore i will write here log t is equal to log i0 upon i is equal to a is equal to epsilon cl now i will write log t is equal to a is equal to epsilon cl so the transmittance is equal to here log to the best 10 is there therefore 10 raised to minus a or 10 raised to minus epsilon cl so in this way we can calculate our transmittance so these are the equations for uh, solving the problems of ultraviolet spectroscopy when absorbance is given or molar extension coefficient is given or transmittance is given we can use this equation for problem solving so this is all about the uh, introductory part of ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy